Last year, e-commerce giant Alibaba and Baidu donated its entire quantum computing division to the Chinese government. Alibaba had invested on the order of $15 billion in the effort to build a fully functioning quantum computer. What could be the reason behind the sudden exit of Baidu and Alibaba? Well, one reason could be that quantum computers are not making money. But is there more to this story? Could it be that their choices may not have been entirely made alone, and perhaps reveal that the Chinese government wants a firmer grip on the nation's quantum computing development? As the Chinese government appears to tighten its grip on our quantum research, major American technological companies like Amazon, IBM, and Google are charging full steam ahead with their quantum computing plans. This quantum race between two rivals, the United States and China, is shaping to be a 21st century version of a space race. Stick around until the end to find out the consequences of this dramatic quantum race, ranging from advanced military equipment to hacking the entire internet. Quantum Race – The Facts China and America are in a race to achieve the so-called quantum supremacy. Quantum supremacy is a jargon term. It describes a point when you have a quantum computer that can outperform any classical supercomputer. Today, classical just means not quantum, not that you're old or something. There are classical mechanics and classical thermodynamics. They just mean not quantum. Even Einstein's theory of general relativity is classical, not quantum. So, the computer you are using is called classical. Of course, your computer has atoms, quarks, and so on, which relies on quantum mechanics, but that's not the point. Okay. Back to quantum supremacy. In quantum supremacy, you build a quantum machine-solving problem beyond conventional machines' capabilities. The problem does not have to be of any practical value. Usually, the trick is that physicists cook up some utterly crazy problem designed such that only quantum computers are able to solve it efficiently. In 2019, Google claimed to have achieved quantum supremacy for the first time with its 53-qubit Sycamore professor. 53 qubits, if you compare it to 53 bits, like 53 zeros or ones, might sound way little, but this really is a landmark achievement. Google's Sycamore quantum processor solved a problem in just 200 seconds. That would take the world's best supercomputer 10,000 years to complete. You would agree that that's quite an achievement, don't you think? By 2029, Google plans to spend several billion dollars to build a quantum computer and do business and scientific calculations. Whatever that means. Now, let's just see what China has achieved. In 2020, the Chinese quantum computer Zhu Zhang achieved a similar world record. The Chinese quantum computer was able to solve a boson sampling problem in just 1.27 microseconds which would have taken 600 years even for the most powerful supercomputer to do. This achievement proved China to be the global leader in the field of photonics quantum computing. Back in the U.S. in 2023, IBM introduced the largest quantum processor, Condor, with 1,121 superconducting qubits utilizing cross-resonance gate technology. Furthermore, IBM launched another quantum computer called Heron the least error-prone device to date. This device is quite a big achievement because quantum computers are extremely sensitive to environmental errors. Not just that, Google and IBM donated a $100 million investment to Japan intended to help Tokyo University build a quantum-centric supercomputer with 100,000 qubits within 10 years. This U.S.-Japan partnership comes as both nations work to continue to outpace China in quantum advancements. While not an explicit goal of the deal, maintaining a technological lead over China is in the interests of U.S., Japan, and other G7 nations. Hmm. But what would be the reason behind such an aggressive move by the United States? Not surprisingly, it has to do with the military. Washington is worried that China's People's Liberation Army could surpass the U.S. military in terms of overall power and use quantum technology to do so. What is a quantum computer? But what is a quantum computer? Why should we even build a quantum computer in the first place? We already know how to build supercomputers. 
let's just make it larger and more powerful. Well, it turns out that some problems of high complexity class just can't be solved by making supercomputers larger and more powerful. One way to get around this is by building a computer that operates on a completely different principle. Nature isn't classical, damn it. And if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical. And by golly, it's a wonderful problem, because it doesn't look easy. With those words, in 1981, Richard Feynman, an American physicist, introduced the idea that, by harnessing quantum mechanics, it might be possible to build a new kind of computer capable of tackling problems that would cause a run-of-the-mill machine to choke. Soon, in 1994, American mathematician Peter Shor discovered that by using quantum computers, you can solve prime factorization problems efficiently. Our current cryptography protocols, such as RSA codes, are based on the assumption that factorizing a large prime number is hard. If today's cryptography protocols fail, it would be impossible to secure online connections, to send confidential messages, make secure financial transactions, or authenticate data. Anyone could access anything. Anyone could pretend to be anyone. The digital economy would collapse. It turns out to be a big reason why countries are so focused on building quantum computers. They fear other countries might build it sooner and gain an advantage. It might be turning into Enigma again. How about qubit? The bit is the most basic unit of information in classical computing and classical information. A quantum bit, or qubit, plays a similar role in quantum computation and information. The difference between bits and qubits is that, unlike bits, qubits can be in a state other than 0 or 1. It is perfectly legal to have a linear combination of these two states. The phenomenon is called quantum superposition. Quantum superposition is the magic behind quantum supercomputing. You can make qubits out of almost anything showing quantum properties. It can be an electron's spin, an atom's energy levels, or a photon's polarization state. While the number of qubits is a primary measure of how good a quantum computer is, the other important requirement is their quality. IBM is pushing on both frontiers, making records on the number of qubits and being able to correct errors on them. If you want to brush up on the basics of qubits or quantum mechanics, we do have separate videos on it. Semiconductor War and Quantum Race You might have heard of the Semiconductor War, or the Chip War, between the U.S. and China. Due to their unique electrical properties, semiconductor technology is used to build computing processors, transistors, and memory devices, and even gain military advances. Hindering China's progress in semiconductor production has become a centerpiece of the current U.S. foreign policy. Interestingly enough, semiconductors and quantum physics are closely intertwined, as the behavior of electrons within semiconductors is governed by quantum mechanics. Having better quantum technology leads to better semiconductors. In fact, Quantum Dot, one of the leading hardware candidates for quantum computing, is just an advanced nanoscale semiconductor device. The quantum race is, therefore, directly related to the already ongoing infamous semiconductor war. Quantum communication Another big part of the quantum race is in quantum communication. We discussed before that the quantum algorithm can potentially break our cryptography, and, therefore, the internet. But using quantum mechanics, you can achieve something that would not be possible otherwise, generating a secret key between two parties. This protocol is called the quantum key distribution. This key can be used to encrypt and decrypt messages on the internet, making communication secure. Quantum key distribution relies on quantum entanglement to establish secure communication channels. There is a massive global effort in the U.S., Europe, China, and Japan to build precisely this. In 2007, the U.S. achieved quantum key distribution over a distance of 148.7 kilometers, marking a significant milestone in quantum communication. By 2015, the University of Geneva extended this achievement, achieving quantum key distribution over optical fiber spanning 307 kilometers, setting a new record. 
In 2017, Chinese physicists at the University of Science and Technology of China measured entangled phonons over an impressive distance of 1,203 kilometers between two ground stations. This shows the Chinese potential for intercontinental quantum communication. So, what's next? Overall, it seems like the U.S. is clearly winning the quantum race. However, China has also built a strong reputation in frontier quantum technologies. For context, here is what the U.S. ambassador to Japan said while donating $150 million to Japan's quantum computing facilities. Until recently, he said the United States was too lax in allowing Chinese students to work at American universities in advanced scientific fields. We were funding them. We were not only funding them, we were training them, educating them to come back and compete against us. So, who will win in this quantum race? In reality, there are no true winners, only losers. And among them, the customer bears the greatest burden of defeat.